welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video. If you're new here, my name is Shalini and I make videos about technology, data science, professional development advice, and more. Make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss any videos. A few weeks ago, I talked about how to start out in data science, and I think the best way to learn more about data science is to work on projects. That's what I'm going to be talking about today. Let's get into some data science projects and ideas. So before getting into some potential project ideas that you could work on, why should you even work on data science projects? If you want to learn more about data science, I think doing projects is the best way to get more experience with coding and thinking through problems. There is also so much data in the world and with doing your own projects, you can start analyzing data that is interesting to you and start to build projects that fascinate you. Also, learning about the theory of data science is great, but ultimately data science is a very practical field and getting into your own projects really help with that. So now let's get into some potential data sets that you can use for your project. This is definitely not an exhaustive list at all. This list is a super, super, super small subset of the data that is out there in the world. I like this specific list because these data sets have a good range of topics. Some of them are really good for beginners who are starting out with data science projects. And some of the data sets are also very relevant to this year in particular. Sometimes starting a project and figuring out a good thing to analyze is the hardest part. So hopefully these ideas inspire you to do some projects. Feel free to check out these data sets, I'll link them in the description below, but in no particular order, here we go. Number one, the IRIS data set. So this data set is about the IRIS plant and it is a classic data set. It's really good if you're starting out in data science or this is your first data science project. The data set isn't super big and there aren't a lot of columns or features there as well, so it's a great place to start to dip your toes in the water. The data set gives you different information about the length or the width of certain parts of the plant. So one thing you could do with this data set is predict what type of flower it is based on all of these different specifications. Number two, the MNIST digits. This is another classic data set that is used to explore different machine learning models. The data set consists of different images that each have a single digit on it, so something from zero to nine. This is a step up from the previous data set because you are working with image data and you can do some really cool digit classification models. So one popular question from this data set is, given an image, how can you identify what that digit is? Having images as your data makes it a lot more interesting to analyze, and there are a lot of different techniques and machine learning models that you can use for this task of digit classification. Number three, stock market data. So the data set for this is huge. There are thousands of files related to finance. The data has historical daily price and volume data for US stocks and ETF trading as well. There is so much data, there's literally data from the 1900s up until now. You could definitely try out some cool time series analysis with this data. Each stock and ETF in the data set has many days and years worth of information. See if you can find any trends related to a specific stock or maybe even across different stocks. Number four, analyzing tweets from Twitter. So if you're looking to do something a little more advanced, one thing you could try is using the Twitter developer API. You can apply to get access to the API and then after that you can collect and clean your own data using that API. With using the API, there's an extra step in the process. You aren't given the data or the data set. You just have the API and you can write some code up in order to get the data. Alternatively, there are a lot of data sets online that have already done this work for you. They've already collected the data and pre-processed it and put it nicely into a data set for you. One example is this data set for Twitter sentiment analysis. It gives you the training and the test sets already and each file has the tweet text. Text data is interesting because there is a lot of cleaning that you would want to do and feature engineering as well so you can have inputs into your model. With this data set, you would want to detect hate speech. So try building a model that allows you to detect hate speech in these tweets. Number five, US election data. So the US election happened this month and in general, over the last few months, there has been a lot of election stuff happening and from it has come a lot of data. In the data set that I linked down below, there is a lot that you can analyze. For example, take a look at the votes by county and by state. Take a look at the presidential election as well as the House and the Senate elections and maybe even compare across years. 
How did the votes and this distribution change from 2016 to 2020? Number six, COVID-19 data. So another super popular and super relevant topic to talk about, but also look at the data for is COVID-19 data. There are a variety of data sets online. Data sets for each country, coronavirus CT scan images, comparing COVID with other outbreaks that have happened in the past, and overall so much more. Based on what area of COVID-19 you want to analyze, you can look at the different trends or patterns across different states or countries. How did policies enforced or not enforced affect the number of cases and the number of deaths? Can you understand hospital capacity better? How has air travel been affected by COVID-19? There are a lot of questions you can ask. See what you can learn about the coronavirus. Number seven, earthquake data. So this is a really cool data set. This is from the National Earthquake Information Center, and it has information about different earthquakes and their location, size, time, and more. It has earthquakes from 1965 until now, so there is a lot of information to look at in the data set. One thing you could do is see if there are any trends across the years, and potentially do some cool visualizations with maps using the latitude and longitude. Let me know if you predict any big earthquakes coming up. Number eight, movie data. So this data set has information about thousands of movies. The information includes the plot, the cast, the budget, popularity, ratings, genre, and more. This data is from the movie databases API. So the link that I have down below has already gone through the API and gotten the data for you. If you want an extra challenge though, you can try looking up the API and seeing if you can collect the data by yourself and potentially even get more information than what's in the data set. There are a lot of questions you can ask about this data set as well. What factors influence how successful a movie is or not? Can you predict what movies are likely to be hits? See what analysis you can do. So obviously I can't talk about every single data set out there because there are way too many, but if you want to explore other data sets, I highly recommend checking out Kaggle.com. There are tons of data sets on Kaggle and you can easily download them onto your computer or even start analyzing them through the website. Kaggle is a great place to look for data sets. I think there are data sets about literally every single topic on there and it's a really cool place to get inspiration. So once you have your data set that you're interested in, I would start by loading the data using whatever language you're going to use and start exploring it. Do some EDA or exploratory data analysis. Start asking yourself some of the questions that I talked about earlier or ask yourself some new questions based on what you want to explore in the data. You want to create this research question, something you want to learn about from the data. Let that guide your code and analysis. Then deep dive into the data. Try to find possible trends and patterns. Clean your data, do some future engineering based on what information you have. Plot useful charts that outline some of the trends that you find. Based on the data you choose, what you do with that data is going to vary. For example, if you have a data set of song lyrics, you might spend some more time doing text cleaning and feature engineering versus a data set about Titanic passengers. In general, see what you can find about the data and then report your findings at the end so other people can understand your project as well. So those were a few tips and data set ideas I had if you're starting out in data science or if you want to get started on a data science project. There are tons of other data sets available online, so find something that interests you and start looking at it. If you have any questions or if you have a favorite data set, let me know, leave a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe for more tips and advice and videos in general, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.